This is episode number 50 of the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast with our special guest, Dan Wells, owner of CrossFit Horsepower. Welcome to the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. My name is Jeff Thornton, alongside my co-host, Michael Anders. Each week, we bring you an inspiring person or message related to our three pillars of success, manifestation, business, fitness, and nutrition. Our intent is to enrich, educate, and empower our audience to take action, control, and accountability for their decisions. Thank you for allowing us to join you on your journey. Now let's get started. We would like to thank today's sponsor, Meltdown in the Desert 2, the marketing and entrepreneur seminar of the summer. The Meltdown in the Desert is the summer's hottest social media and entrepreneur event of the year. This influential event brings together some of the industry's top leaders across business, marketing, and social media. In this two-day conference, you will walk away with tactics and strategies used by some of the top leaders to directly implement into your personal or business. Be sure to check out the Meltdown in the Desert 2 on the website M-D-I-T-D, the number 2, dot eventbrite.com. Jeff and Durs on the mic with our special guest, Dan Wells, across at Horsepower, all the way from La La Land. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, boys? Good to be here. Nice to have you, brother. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So nice got, place you got out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. You know, it's good sweet, weather. It's sweet dry. Digs. It's beautiful. I well, didn't know it, Phoenix was so nice. It's usually dry. It's raining today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday <laughs> you, was dry. You, you can yeah. bank on the dry. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, not, you know, we, you know, you stopped by the gym yesterday and, you know, we, we got to talking and you have a, a very uh, interesting story from the standpoint that you, you've lived many lives. And it, as, as you put it yesterday, to paraphrase, you know, it, it's cool being one of the old guys because I've done so many different things up to this point. Yeah. And, um, you know, for, for those, for people that are coming uh, listening to this show today that don't know who you are, where you come from, can you kind of give us the cliff notes and your, your evolution as a, as an athlete and a business owner to, to get you to where you're at? You bet. Yeah, that's the beauty of the Masters athletes. Huh? We all got <laughs> long stories. Um, so there's, let's see, first out of college, I used to sell, uh, no, shoot, summers in college, I used to sell books door to door 80 hours a week. That's how I spent my summers. Uh-huh. Just getting slammed and rejected all the time. Probably the best job I ever had because it was the hardest and it, uh, it kind of made me who I am. When I got out of there, I was a CPA, clicking and dragging through spreadsheets in downtown LA. Then I went to uh, Deloitte and became a management consultant, traveled around the country. After three years, uh, no, one year there, two years at the uh, CPA firm, I went to business school at Cornell and then got out and worked for UBS as an investment banker. Uh, after that, I, did, I, didn't, I loved the stock market, but I didn't really want to become these guys, and I actually wanted to get back to California. So yeah. <laughs> moved back to California, started working in, um, I would flip real estate. Nice. And also, I was in L.A., so why not uh, make some money? in front of the camera as well. So I've been on a lot of TV shows from, um, you know, Will and Grace to Days of Our Lives to Gilmore Girls, 90210, all of them, like a bunch, whole bunch of different things. Yeah. The new I mean, that's LA. The new 90210? Yeah, the new one, the new one. No, really? I'm not that old. I wish I was on the <laughs> old one, man. That would have been cool. <laughs> Although Ian Ziering is one of my clients now at CrossFit Horsepower. Is he? So yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Steve. and Zach from Saved by the Bell. All, all the childhood favorites are oh, man. Oh, now <laughs> horsepower clients. I love it, man. <laughs> so did that for a while. Uh, someone dragged me into Brick, and uh, instantly I was like, what the heck am I doing at my gym? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, back and bias, chest and tries. Shoulders on leg day. These guys are working yeah, yeah. and it drove me nuts. I couldn't believe that there were people working so much harder than me. So uh, the next day I, t- I would join brick and uh, mm-hmm. let's see, I guess nine months later I started open. I started the process for CrossFit horsepower. A year later we were in business. And so it's been no, five years since I opened okay. the first CrossFit horsepower. No kidding. And yeah, that's so that's in a nutshell, and of course, uh, competition along the way. Mm. Uh, first time I saw JP at, at uh, Brick, I he's so little, I could not believe it. And he's sitting there banging out deadlifts at 225. I was like, "What? How many times are you doing that, bro? <laughs> 21 times in a row? Just ripping it. <laughs> You're 150 pounds. I couldn't believe it. I was like, huh? 
So obviously I had no excuses either because, yeah. you know, he was my age and, and smaller. Mm. So I, mm. I needed to figure out how to do all this stuff. So I quickly put on 20 pounds of muscle and uh, became a, a competitor as well. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome, man. Real quick, I, before while it's at the top of my, my mind, how was your transition uh, out of brick into horsepower from a, a communal standpoint? Did, That's did, weird. You know, at first you kind of you're getting all the likes from your buddies at, at brick, and then those likes on your Facebook start <laughs> to fade off, and then you get the new likes from your new new members, yeah. and then in about three four months, there's no more likes from your brick folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, it's, it's weird how that happens. You know, mm. and but the cool thing was nobody really became haters. JP and I have always maintained a really good friendship. Okay, cool. We actually made the games together. Okay. The, the, we were the you know, top 20, and so we got yeah. to actually go through it together um, the first time we made the games as individuals. And it was, it was really cool. And, and you know, I, there hasn't been a single anniversary party that uh, I haven't, the brick inter year anniversary yeah. party that JP hasn't made sure I wasn't there for. And That's awesome. Man. Yeah, so we're okay. all really good friends, cool. but uh, you know how it works. <laughs> That's a, and have you Communities are like that. Have sure. you always been an athlete? Yeah, I was a wrestler uh, growing up in school. That was, uh -huh. that was my sport, wrestling. Okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, not a big guy. Uh, I'm still only 165 pounds after gaining 20 pounds of muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to talk about what I don't even what know if I was a grown ass man before that. <laughs> what did you? I still don't know. What did you wrestle at? Uh, 119 pounds of whopping badassery. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bitches? I'm 119. <laughs> what you got? Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So not because the the reason the reason I asked that is because there's there's a lot of what I'll call parody in the um, the the box owner game, and you know everybody comes from somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there's a lot of horror stories out there of somebody that you know was a member and then decided to go ahead and open their own box, and they're like the the whoever was their coach or uh, previous owner never saw it coming, and now it's just like fuck that dude, and you know they're out of my life and don't support anything that they're up to. So it, it's good to no. Get, I've had a lot of. I mean, look, one of my first coach. Everybody, I get it. Look. One thing I say to my closest friends is you got to give people, people the benefit of the doubt. People are doing the best they can with what they've got. Yeah. You know, at 5'9", I'm never going to slam dunk a basketball or play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I get it. But I'm still out there doing the best I can with what I've got. Um, <coughs> it, I've had it, one of my first coaches, still one of my best friends is Andrea Egger. I get it. you got to get out on the road and make your thing. Create right. your Egger bomb. Create your seminars. Create your life. You know, mm -hmm. I can't expect you to stay here. And I say that to everybody that comes in. I'm like, look, I, I want this to be a stepping stone towards what it is that you want to do with your life and who it is that you want to become. And I want to help you get there. And that's what I say to all my coaches and all my staff, everyone. Um, I get it. I want great things for everybody that I'm involved with. Uh, Becca Voigt was, a, was one of my coaches for uh, about a year at Horsepower. And she needed to open up her own gym. I get mm -hmm. it. She's freaking Becca Voigt. Of yeah. course she needs her own <laughs> right. gym. Um, and of course, even though she's a technically a competitor because she's in the same area as me, um, we, I was super supportive. I'm like, yeah, man, he lives closer to you. you, you know, let's build your base with him. I, we, it's, I'm on Ventura Boulevard. There's only so many square feet for yeah. my members. I'm like, <laughs> people call. I'm like, well, uh, it's kind of crowded. <laughs> how's, how's 7:45 at night sound for you? Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? How about 5 a.m.? How's that? Yeah. So. Well, cool, man. That's <laughs> incredible. That's sort of that's that's an abundant mindset that you have, being able to not be in scarcity that you're going to lose business because somebody else is opening up, and even allowing people from your gym to open up, you know, their own boxes. Where does that come from from you? Is that something that's always been a part of you? No, I, I think when I was younger and um, you know probably a lot more insecure. Everybody's insecure, mm -hmm. but more insecure. I. I had that sort of fear-based mentality, yeah. and it, was, it wasn't enough, and it's me versus you, and, and you kind of like, you feel weird when your, your friend uh, has a success, because yeah. you were uh, yesterday on the same footing, and now he's ahead of you, and it's, it's such, it's so unhealthy, yeah. and it, it's literally, you subscribe to it, and it becomes habit, and it's, you don't have to, yeah. and then once you sort of change your mentality, and, you, and you, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't serve me. And you sort of try it. Wait a minute. There's 6 billion people on the planet. I only know like 500. Well, according to Facebook, <laughs> 5,000. But I don't really, really know them. Um, and, and it's like, well, I want all my friends, my family first, yeah. my close friends second, and you know, my community. I want them to crush it. 
I want us to all go on rad vacations together. I want to come over to your house, and I want cocktail hour to be ridiculous as we overlook your balcony in Malibu. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? I want all my friends to be Mark Cuban. Mm-hmm. So having that and, and really genuinely wanting the best for everybody that you know, it makes you happier, makes you healthier, makes them do better. And then it's like, dude, this is, why, why didn't someone tell me this when I was 19? Right. This is so much better. Right. It's so much more fun. Like this- I remember sitting in, uh, in the wrestling mat and there was me and this kid, Eric Jacobs, and it was him and I for MVP every year. And I remember literally having the thought, I hope, I hope he loses. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. He's your teammate, bro. <laughs> and I had that thought. I would like sit there in my chair and be like, damn it, he's, if he wins this, we're going to be tied again. We're going to have the same record. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? That's it's nuts. like you got all these teams to, to compete against. He's right. your teammate. Mm. Yeah, uh, I don't, I'm not even, I, it's, I laugh so much at it now because it's been so many years since I've, detracted from that mindset but i certainly remember it and it's uh it's ugly and it's not fun and it's i mean relationships are everything in life sure. mm-hmm. that's it man yeah. that's that's really it you could you could go do fran in 90 seconds in the middle of a forest but who cares sure mm-hmm. it's the person that saw you do it in 10 minutes the first time that needs to see you do it in 2:30 to be like bro yeah do you remember when? Sure. Yeah. That that moment with, that you have with that person, that's what makes it special. Sure. Yeah. You know? So, you, you know, because you spend a lot of time in some pretty cutthroat industries, <clears throat> you know, in, in finance and whatnot. Uh, what was the catalyst that, that flipped that for you, where you went from a scarcity mindset to an abundant mindset? Was there a moment where you were like, holy shit, I've been doing it wrong all this time, and you put abundance into practice? I don't know that there was a moment, but but what I've learned over the years, and I, I, I love my mom to death. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's really set in her ways. Um, and I've noticed that when you're super set in your ways, it's really hard to learn and to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, she's in Orange County. If you don't know California, that's like the – it's a really hardcore Republican stronghold it's like the Bible Belt in the middle of California, even mm-hmm. though California is a super liberal state. Yeah. And she refuses to n- watch anything but Fox News. She refuses to even entertain a conversation about Barack Obama not being the worst thing that ever happened to the country. <laughs> like, and it, it's, but you just, and that's just a small example. But yeah. when you have that mentality, you can't grow and learn. Mm-hmm. So I constantly question myself. I think, I, I think you're probably wrong. You're pro- like, I just keep telling myself, you're probably wrong about that. You're, I, I have a feeling that if you um, try it a different way, it might be different. Even though usually I've, I've gotten pretty good at things yeah. over, <laughs> over the years. But I constantly question myself all the time. And by doing that, I figure out, oh, this is actually kind of cool looking mm. at it this way. And this is, that's probably an example of, of switching from a mindset of scarcity to one of <laughs> abundance it's like, oh wow, this I actually don't feel stress in my chest anymore. This yeah. is nice. Wow, I feel genuine happiness for my friends. This is nice. Oh, I smile more often now. This is nice. And so when you sort of just try out the fact that you might be wrong mm. about your perspective, sometimes you are. And guess what? When you're wrong, you just grew. You just became a better person. You just have more to offer now to every room that you walk into. Right. And that's that's a great way to live. So so I, there was a point when I started just questioning every thought that I had. And the more I did that, the more I learned. And so I just keep doing that. I'm like, man, how can you tell me? And, and I just I try to fail. I, I mean, I want to talk to my kids. I'm like, every week, I'm like, hey, guys, so what's, what's big happening? What's going on in your life? What did you fail at? Tell me your biggest failure this week. And they're like, oh, I missed when I tried to kick the ball. I'm like, that's it? You don't have a bigger failure than that? Yeah. And I push them because with me, when I was a kid, like it, but going back to wrestling, I developed, I was, you know, insecure little kid. I developed a reputation in school. Oh, that's Dan Wells. He's a badass wrestler. Cool. I'm a badass wrestler. I like this. This feels good. But then if I go to a tournament and lose, am I, am I no longer a badass wrestler? Mm, right. Am I, do I lose my identity? Well, I don't want to lose my identity, so I just won't compete. I just, I'll just bow out of that tournament. Well, guess what? You're never going to grow if you just bow out of every competition. Every, the only way you can grow is to throw yourself out there and try your best and Win or lose, you at least you grew for the next time. You you can't grow in any other way. So to my kids, I don't I don't want them to feel like that. I don't want them to 
approach life like, well, I'm already doing well, so I'm not going to try. I'm just going to stay home and play on my iPad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, get out on the field and let's let's throw your hat in the ring. Let's put take some risk. And so I really encourage them to, because the only real way to fail is to be too scared to take the risk. Mm. And that, that's what I want them to see. Sure. I want them to see that that's, that's life. You yeah. got to get out there and you got to, you got to be in it to win it really, you know? Yeah. So that's a, that's a big message because you, your kids are all 10, 8, 6, 10, 8, 6. So pre-adolescent, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's something that most people don't, that's, that's a subject that most people don't even broach until kids are dealing with more, uh, I guess, substantiated <coughs> kind of adult type issues, you know, and, uh, you know, to, to walk into, you know, what most psychologists would consider the most difficult point of your life, and that is adolescence, you know, equipped with that mentality, that's, yeah. that's huge, man. So kudos to you as a yeah. dad oh, thanks, for doing man. that. Yeah, man. I just, I just <clears throat> see it, and it, they don't have enough to be stressed about yet. Right. Like, he, he literally has, like, one of those Mophies on his phone, and he's like, Dad, can I borrow your charger? <laughs> I'm like, why, dude? <laughs> what do you – he's like, I'm only at 98%. I'm like, really? You're at nine. You can't. I'm at 34 percent. You can't. <laughs> uh, why do you? He's like, but I'll be at 100. Just can I just borrow for a second? I'm like, that, is that really what you're worried about right yeah. now? Is your, you know? And then we go to a football game, and he's like, Daddy, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, dude, this is great. Yeah. This is where I, you need to get to this level of nervous as much as possible. Because guess what? It's gonna get a lot harder mm -hmm. than this down the road. Next mm. week, next month, next year, high school, college. After college, when you're trying to pay the bills. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's get used to handling stress now. Right. And inevitably, those situations where he's most nervous, he comes out of them and there's that wash of, oh, wow, that was the greatest thing ever. Well, guess what? You can't ever find the greatest thing ever unless you put yourself in that stressed situation. Sure. So I try to give them as many of those things as I can, you know, toughen them up. That's incredible because, you know, a lot of times growing up, parents... You know, I don't want to put everybody in a bucket, but then they don't celebrate the the fear. They don't celebrate failure, so to speak. It's like you get an F on your report card. Like, you suck. You know what I mean? Like, go back and learn. But what you're doing, it's incredible because you're continuing to push them past that part where they it was initially a cliff, and they find out, wow, there's there's more ground ahead of me than I than I expected. You know what I mean? That's crazy because <clears throat> as kids, we hit a point in our lives where you think like. You sort of get complacent, and your parents can coddle you and make you feel like, well, the reason I didn't show up to this tournament, this football game, is because, you know, my mom didn't let me. She, yeah, she, my foot hurts. My foot hurts, and my mom said, okay, your foot does hurt, sweetie. They sort of, mm -hmm. they acknowledge your fear or whatever, and they, that's, you continue to build that, you know, what would you say, those excuses or those stories in your head. What were some of the biggest stories that you overcame in your head as you continued to grow in your life because you know you had that first that scarce mindset of you know I don't want these guys to win you know get ahead of me and things like that what was the one of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome initially starting your business to get out of that mindset because coming from corporate America and then moving to the entrepreneur mindset Listen, well I mean if you're talking about mindsets one mindset that I definitely had that shifted majorly thanks to CrossFit was that I could do everything myself. Mm. I'd go to that. I'm like, I'd like to see people with trainers. I'm like, really? You need a trainer? Mm -hmm. You can't go do tricep pull downs by yourself? I'm like, all right, dude, go pay for your trainer. Good. Like, and I would go there and I would do my routine. It's not like, you know, read a magazine. Like there's there's plenty of, you know, I can push myself. I don't need anybody. <clears> and, and that's how I felt. And I felt I could do my career. I could, I could renovate a real, real estate building. I could figure anything out myself. Right. CrossFit, though. It, you, it humbles you so much, and you accept, and you realize, and then you become actually proud to say, which I can tell you right now, I am not the same athlete when I'm working out by myself as I am in a group, right. or mm. even with a training partner. I need that person in the room, also busting their butts, going through hell like I am, because I try harder, and I will admit it. Mm -hmm. I am not as good without my community. Mm -hmm. I take the classes with my with people in my gym all the time. I I am better. I'm a better person because of them. And then the same goes. And then there's other opportunities, as you know, in the entrepreneurial world. And guess what? Not only do other people bring better perspectives, different perspectives, different angles to look at, so that the end product is better, i.e., better than me alone. Right. 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 
but it's way more fun. Sure. If you guys can go on the journey together as two or three people and accomplish something amazing and you know, change the world with your ideas, that's so much more fun than just you alone. Yeah. Right. And you're going to be better, mm -hmm. too. So that mentality shift from me against the world slash I can do everything by myself to I'm so much better off and this is so much more fun with friends and community was a major turning point for me. It's, it's the reason that I had, you know, I've been having the most lucrative years of my life the last couple of years. It's been, it's a, it's a, it's all about that. I mean, it's, we're in this together. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's a meritocracy, but at the same time, uh, you, you can't do it alone. Well, I think that, you know, a, a caveat to that is being able to, s in your mind, push that reset button and start focusing and enjoying the process rather than trying to only enjoy the results. Because <clears throat> I, I think that, you know, anytime you achieve something great in life, you know, whether it's, you know, finishing your MBA at Cornell or, you know, getting to the CrossFit Games, the, the actual achievement of doing it from where I sit is always way more anticlimactic than you thought it was going to be while you were in the process. The credits yeah. don't roll. Music doesn't fucking play. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not over. Yeah. It, life keeps on happening. So if you're not enjoying the process, you're only, you're hedging your bets on how you're going to feel once you achieve. That's not a fulfilled life. No. And, well, they, they've done research. They. They. The collective. Quote, yeah. unquote. <laughs> them. them. You know what makes you happy? You know what makes us people happy? Uh, finding problems and overcoming them, solving hmm. problems, solving problems. Mm -hmm. If life was such that you just were born and everything was perfect and you had no resistance, you just walked up to the plate and hit home runs all the time, life would be yeah. boring. It would be no fun. So we want problems because that's what makes you happy to have a challenge, to have an obstacle and to overcome it, mm -hmm. to work hard to overcome it. And that's what makes people happy. So what happens is it's okay. So what are your problems? What problems do you have to overcome, right? You know, this morning I woke up and um, I had to get a good cup of coffee. I tasted the coffee downstairs. I didn't like it. So I went across the street to Starbucks where I know I'm going to like the coffee. Mm. And, and so I solved my problem of getting the coffee that I need to start my day. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, there was uh, someone who had a similar problem, probably out in the outskirts of Phoenix, who had no money. And he probably was coming off of some kind of drug through the night, and he needed to get a cup of coffee. So he had to go out and get a cup and beg and walk into 7-Eleven and get his cup of coffee. So we both had a similar problem, <laughs> but his problem really sucks compared to my version. Right. So I think creating a life where you surround yourself with problems that are exciting and enticing and hopefully have a positive impact on your family, your community, the people that you in involve yourself with, that's the kind of life you want to live because not only are you happy, but you're going to help the people around you. And it's a sort of like, you know, high level problems sure. you mm -hmm. want to have. You right. know, Warren Buffett has really high level money problems. <laughs> we all yeah. have money problems, but his are just really high level. Right. You know, Elon Musk, he's got really high. He's got 15 yeah. billion dollars. He's got problems just like you do, but they're fun, exciting problems. And, mm -hmm. I, right. and I think uh, that's those are the, that's what, you know, keeps him happy, keeps sure. you happy. You know, you want to create those types of problems. Yeah, absolutely. And when you, speaking of the, you know, the circle you're surrounding yourself with, because you were mentioned earlier, you know, you want to hang around the most successful people, sit on the balcony and watch the sunset on somebody's, you know, look, sit, overlooking Venice Beach or wherever. How do you go about finding those right people to surround yourself with? Because, you know, a lot of people come in and out of our lives as we continue to grow and evolve. How do you find the people that are there that are going to be solid throughout the entire process with you? Yeah. And that's a, that's a great question. And <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know really of anyone that has walked into a CrossFit gym and not left, uh, not said after a year, wow, not only have I met more people and built more relationships in the past year than I have at any point in my life, mm -hmm. but these are some really high quality folks. Where yeah. did you meet these people? Inevitably, the CrossFit gym bring, attracts those A-type personalities. They love the meritocracy of CrossFit. CrossFit is the one place where you're like, you know what? I want to better my life. And I know it's hard. I know it's going to be painful. I know I'm going to want to quit. I know I'm going to want to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. But this is a place where if I put in that work, 
I will be a better version of myself in a year, in three months, in mm -hmm. six months, in a year. Let's do this. And those types of folks, those types of mindsets also come from different backgrounds. Right. One of them might be a lawyer. One of them might be an entrepreneur. One of them uh, you know, might be a, a doctor and whatnot. Uh, when they come together and they have a beer on a Friday night, they're going to chat. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, dude, wow, I have a really good idea about this. What do you think? How would you go about this? Oh, really? I have a friend who does this. And it's sort of like it just all kind of melds together. Um, there, so we have it really good as far as building relationships in our communities as CrossFitters. Sure. We, we just do. It's, we're so lucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm in Studio City. So it's right literally the gym in the heart of all the movie productions and all. I mean, literally the guy who just... Uh, the judge who sent the order to block uh, President Trump, yeah. he's the judge that did that in the, uh, the federal circuit yeah. court judge. Uh -huh. He was tapped by Obama. He takes my 5 a.m. class every day. No. Mm. Like, there's just so many ballers, it's absurd. Mm -hmm. sure. and, and, and then, of course, all you know, the actors, the producers, everybody. Um, versus the, <laughs> the olden days when, remember, you would work at a co company and You'd go to a mixer, whatever, and exchange business cards, yeah. and then you'd be like awkward, like follow up. <laughs> yeah. like, hey man, remember? Yeah, well, we had a we had a gin and tonic together. Um, you told me about your kids' yeah. trip to the shore. Anyhow, let's grab a coffee. Like it's just like ah. Uh. Whereas with CrossFit, dude, you respect anyone. I don't care if you're, you know, three hundred pounds. If you just pushed yourself through that same nine minute AMRAP that I did. High five, bro. Real get, yeah. kill. I respect you. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm for sure willing to give you my time, and I'd love to know what you're up to. Right. So we kind of have, have a really big leg up with sure. that. That's <laughs> true, man. And, you know, I've seen an interesting, interesting correlation. It may be off, but, you know, it seems CrossFit, the higher you scale up financially, is well because people who are willing to pay that price, because CrossFit's more expensive than walking into an L.A. fitness, so to speak, where you're just going to get yeah. sort of like – you know, the, the typical gym mentality, then you move up the next level to me is that CrossFit where people are willing to pay that money. Yep. So you've upped your social level in a way because people who are willing to pay that price, mm -hmm. they've already, mentally, they're at a different level than the guy who's just going to go to the normal gym. Because you see, you Durs and I have talked about all the time, you go to a bodybuilding gym, there is no interaction. You put your headphones on and that's it. Mm -hmm. you don't, you're not looking at the next person, you're not smiling at them, it's whatever. But like you said, the first time I walked into CrossFit, Everybody is they they welcome you with open arms. Hey, who are you? How you doing? And totally. it's a, it's an amazing environment. And it's like I have a CrossFit gym 400 meters down the street from me. I charge 225 a month. They charge I think it's 119. Yeah, I want to say. And I, and I'm like I, when people come in, I'm like, look, they're really important to our community. Yeah. Every community needs a Kmart. It's important. Yeah, people got to clothe themselves. We're Lululemon. That's just who we are, yeah. and that's what we represent. We want right. the top-notch, highest quality everything. Mm -hmm. Equipment, coaches, programming, facilities, everything. Yeah. So, yes, you pay a little more for that, but like you said, not only do you get surrounded by good stuff in the gym, but the folks you interact with, that right. becomes your life, dude. Yeah, sure. That becomes your life. Right? Yes. Because your life is going to end. It will end. Yep. And the folks that you spent time with during that life, that was your life. Yep. Right. And that's what you signed up for. So if you can hack the extra 100 bucks a month, it's a really good investment. Right. Because sure. you could wait until you're old and dying and spend 10 grand a day trying to stay off life support for, yep. for another day and another day and another day. But right now in your best years, man, make it happen. Spend a little extra. It's true. <laughs> and we've talked about this on previous podcasts. You go... We, the this whole the whole mastermind setup is when you pay to go to masterminds, you know whatever whatever the price may be at five thousand dollars whatever, the amount of people the amount of high quality people that you're going to meet there far surpasses the open Groupon type of mindset that are people everybody comes through the door maybe you might run into somebody if you're lucky, but you can just cut through all the weeds by paying that extra investment. It's not even like you're spending money you're making that investment in yourself mm -hmm. and your future and the people around you. So I think it's, it's, it's just like it's so important to know where you want to put yourself in your life, you know. But it, it, it follows everything, CrossFit gyms, masterminds, wherever you want to be. It's, I don't think people, once you get over that hump, you can start seeing it's a lot easier to get access to the type of high-powered players that you want to do. Like you mentioned the judge or anybody else. Yeah, right. You no, know? It's, it's true, man. That's the reason I never, uh, I never take the deal of the week on uh, 
Expedia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you know, I'm like, let's go something at least <laughs> mid tier. I don't know what that is, but I don't think I'm gonna like it. Well, I mean, it, it's it's extremely important. You know, you see all these people, and we we help our members through this process as well. You know, the 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 people that you surround yourself with have an immediate impact on the quality of life that you live. Yeah. So why not? make the extra effort whether it's it's financially or you know just getting outside your box you know and surrounding you taking the chance to introduce yourself or be surrounded by the people that have a positive impact on your life you know because the the relationships that we get you know when we're all sweating tired breathing hard laying on our backs when that clock hits zero at the end of a workout it doesn't matter what industry you're in doesn't matter how much money you make, doesn't matter how shitty your day was or what kind of car you're going to get in after that workout. We're all in the same place in that moment. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what brings us together, you know, in, in that CrossFit environment, you know. So when you see, you know, that, that person that's in a totally different t tax bracket than you out on the street, there's mutual respect yep. as opposed to the stranger who you would never associate with in, in, that's why, you know, so many of us military guys gravitate to CrossFit because that's another environment where, you know, we're connecting the uh, um, seemingly unconnectable, where you have people from all these walks of life who come from all these different places that had it not been for the uniform or this workout would never know each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so impactful. Yeah. That's so impactful. Totally. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know. So it, when it comes to... Uh, you know, your, your, your experience as a wrestler, your experience in, in corporate America, how does all that play into your success as a box owner now? Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> I, it, the first thing I would say is just, uh, just be genuine, be nice, be cool. Don't try to be anything other than who you are. Uh, that's been the biggest thing for me. That's, that's just works for me. I just think authenticity is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not afraid to let people know me. I mean, that people, I don't try to be anything other than who I am. And I have, it gets really ugly sometimes in, in these workouts that I'm like, you know, F CrossFit. I hate this. I don't even want to go to the games anymore. I hate, it's just, and I'll be like, tell everybody the moment I feel it. Like I just don't. So I think the fact that, uh, you know, I am what, you think I am? <laughs> I, th I think uh, I think people appreciate that. I'm not yeah. trying to be anything other than just a, a real person with real problems and and you know along the way sometimes real real su successes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think just being yourself and being nice and courteous and just you know kind of knowing that everybody is on their own personal journey mm. and and they're all doing their very best, right. the best they can with with what they got. Like I said earlier and. Uh, just that mutual respect and, yep. and honesty and, and kind of like, hey, uh, I'm a real person. I got problems too, and mm -hmm. um, and we all share struggles. And let's let's go out there and do our best again today, right. and get a little stronger for tomorrow. Sure, sure. And this is this is your f how many how many times you've been to the games now? Just once. Just once. Yeah, when the one rep max was snatch, I made it because I can compete with big guys on snatch. Right. But when it was deadlift the next year. There's just too many huge dudes that can deadlift, and right. they can't do anything else. They, they can't right. barely do yeah. pull-ups. But uh, no, it was too many people ahead of me on the. Mm -hmm. What is your snatch? Uh, two thirty-two. Good God. Double yeah. body weight almost. Oh no! Not no, really. oh. I wish. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm one sixty-five. So, but okay. it's you know it's solid. And this is what it is. Again, yeah. you know, I'm just a guy doing the best I can with what I got. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah. I've been trying to gain weight so much <laughs> for so long, <laughs> like dunk tank. Like, please gain some, some muscle, yeah. and I can't, li I literally cannot gain another pound. I eat and eat and eat and yeah. eat and eat yeah. and eat. But it's cool. I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be healthy. That's what I always say to people. Um, they're like, yeah, I'm really, I think I'm going to make it this year. I really, it's going to happen. So excited. I'm training. I'm like, love it, bro. Let's mm. do this. Let's be 100% the best version of yourself you've ever been when the, mm. when the open rolls around. And as a consolation prize, you're in the best shape of your life. <laughs> That's your that? consolation. Like that? you look better than you've ever felt, and you're mentally tougher than you've ever felt. You got the clarity, you got the energy for your family, your friends. Mm -hmm. That's your consolation prize right. with with what we're doing. That's what you get for losing. 
Right. How many people want to be in the best shape of their life at age 20, 30, 40? 40. I mean, for me to PR at age 40? What? Right. That's nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the consolation prize. Right. That's what you get for losing. <laughs> that's yeah. for losing. Yeah. That's incredible. It's so good. Well, that's... It makes you, know, you think. That goes right back to, you know, finding solace in the process and not hedging your bets on the result, right? Because there, there's... I can't tell you how many people have come through our gym, you know... Uh, making that transition out of LA Fitness and giving CrossFit, you know, what they would consider to be an honest shot, and they don't—they're—they're uh, they're not the top, you know. And it's such a shot to their ego. They're like, you know what? Fuck this. It's not for me, you know. And and they walk out and leave. Yeah. You know. And that initial hump is such a big deal. It and is. It's, and it's what I tell my my coaches when they coach the intro. I'm like, guys, this person when they come in for your intro. Their entire future is in your hands. Mm-hmm. If you don't bring the energy, if you don't bring the complete picture, if you don't give them a real shot at this, they might never come back. I don't give a shit if I don't make another 225 bucks a month from this person. Yeah. What I do care about is the fact that I, sh- I can't be there all, all the classes, yeah. but I should have been a better head of this gym to make sure that this person got a fair shot at literally transforming their lives and becoming the best version of themselves that they could ever become. And that's on you if it doesn't happen because mm-hmm. I, I really believe that, I mean, I, most people should be doing this type of functional fitness workouts. I, I really do. I want our whole country to be just a bunch of badasses, mm-hmm. you know, represent. We can't it's, but yet, but um, it's, it's so good for people. I mean, this would, this would cut back on our health care costs crisis um, there's so many things that would, would benefit oh, yeah. but it's hard i get it some people don't have the mental capacity the you know the wherewithal to, to it's tough it's it's brutal mm-hmm. but you don't have to go 100 percent. that helps people a lot too because mm-hmm. people don't know that they're the the ferrari that they think they are doesn't have to go 100 percent. be like mm-hmm. oh dude take it at 80 mm-hmm. percent. just take it at 80 percent. dial it back it, yeah and mm-hmm. they're like really i can I can I can do that? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Take it yeah. 80%. And inevitably, when they look up and it's a nine minute AMRAP and there's one minute left, well, fuck it. Go ahead and turn the car on and go. Yeah. Because there's only a minute. Who cares? Right. And next thing you know, they PR'd. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, oh, wow. This is great. And guess what? They also just got to know themselves better. Right. Mm. That's how I operate. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. Another benefit. It's, it's great. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So when go how do you how do you cultivate your coaches. So what, what is your, your screening process for coaching potential above and beyond uh, education and technical acumen? Are, what are the characteristics of someone that has it? Well, look, people, people have their lives going on. Mm-hmm. They've got work. They've got family. They've got deadlines. They've got uh, their car breaking down. They've got uh, bills to pay at their house. There's always something. And then with our phone, this thing is just nonstop, always blowing up. CNN, Trump did this. MSNBC, Trump did that. Like, it's like, ah, it never stops. Right. For a little moment in their life, that you, you can't focus on anything but the workout when you're in the workout. And that's so refreshing. That's it. You, for once, you get to focus on one thing. Not changing your kids' diapers, not paying the bills, just the workout at hand. So for that hour, I tell my coaches, I'm like, this this for a lot of people, is the best hour of their day. And they have to sacrifice a lot to get here. They got to move things around. They got to pay money. They got to change their schedule. The least you could do as one person for all these 25 people is bring it. Bring your energy. Bring your fun. Bring your enthusiasm. Try to make this class today the best class you've ever taught. Why not? Why not? You're, you've learned from your past teacher, teachers. Teachers. You've learned from the past coaching that you've done. Why not make today the best ever? Try. Have fun. See what you can do today. And that makes their hour go by faster. Mm -hmm. The whole class enjoys it more. And people get what they came for. They get that moment of solace, that one hour out of their day when they don't have to worry about all that crap that's going on outside of them. So, yes, of course, the, the technical expertise is crucial. I love having, you know, regionals and games athletes involved because it brings a certain level of respect. Um, But... At the end of the day, that old saying, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want them to really genuinely care about these people and make sure that their time is well spent. Show them that you care because my coaches do care. You can tell. And so ask questions. Get to know them. Say what's, you know, get, get to know them. Care. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of my approach. That's <laughs> incredible. You can tell 
it seems to me that they, with the amount of energy that you have, because I can feel your energy, <laughs> it seems like it can impact all of your coaches. They sort of feed off of what you're giving them, and it sort of creates that, that waterfall effect to where everybody then feels what you've influenced them with. I mean, that's, that's a powerful thing to have because not a lot of people have your energy. And, like, initially when, when I came to CrossFit PHX, Durs. Well, let's be clear you know, here. I just had a cup of coffee. <laughs> so I don't want to give too much credit Dude. to me when I got Starbucks that, in my that hand. That only helped. That only helped a little bit. You, that helped amplify you even further than who you are. <laughs> but I, I mean, that's the thing. It's like the community. I can tell that you've created. I definitely got to stop by your gym when I'm there. And then what Durs has created is, you can tell great box owners have an infectious personality that then creates that great community around them. I think that's what I've seen in CrossFit. It makes it such a such a powerful place is that you can tell from the top down it has a positive effect, depending positive or negative effect, depending on who's running the place. You have it. Durs has it. And it's just incredible, man. I think that's – I applaud you for that because can, I can feel it through the mic, your energy. <laughs> Dude, seriously. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when you're how, – how far does your community – because to me that's – that's the that's the the tail of the tape there. Mm -hmm. How far does your community within the box extend outside the box? You know. How far is it? Well, you know, there's there's it's hard to say. We we don't uh I mean we, it just changes every year. Sure. Mm -hmm. We don't try not to sort of organize. It happens really just organically. Right. It just really happens organically. People want to have barbecues. People mm -hmm. want to go out and just blow off some steam. Uh, people want to go to the beach together. People, it just, I sort of leave it to, believe it or not, I don't have to orchestrate too much. Although, right now we're in the middle of a challenge, which is uh, a thing that we do every year. It's mm -hmm. really fun. It's six weeks that we do it in connection with the Open. Yep. We separate into four teams. This year the four teams based on uh, Stranger Things are the four team names. Okay. okay. So we've got like Team 11, Team Demigorgon, Team Hopper, and uh, what's the last one? You guys see Stranger mm. Things? I, I no. What? I heard about it. No. Everybody keeps telling me Dude, to watch I'm it. Dude, I'm so <laughs> jealous of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you still have that to look forward to in your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Is it good? It's so good. Okay. I watched it twice Top. already. <laughs> the whole season. Top of the list. Okay. It's so Stranger good. Stranger Things. Okay. It's it's the Keystone franchise now for Netflix. Really? It's so good. Yeah. It's we just and, and by the way, it's sci-fi. I don't even like sci-fi. <laughs> I don't even like sci-fi, but it's good. You yeah. got to go see it. All right. Okay. Anyway, back to this point. We're having a challenge. Last year, we lost 220. We have Dunk Tank comes in the beginning at the end. Okay. We have, uh, we lost 225 pounds of pure fat during oh, the shit. Open last year okay. and gained, I think, 30 pounds of muscle. Okay. We dial in really heavily on nutrition. We bring mm. in, uh, we have people focus on segment speaking. We have... One night we're doing dancing. We're going to have two of our front desk girls who know how to – their side gig yeah. is dancing. They're, they're like dancers in nice. L.A. So they're going to teach people how to dance, and we're going to uh -huh. have a bowling night, and we're going to uh, just kind of keep it fun throughout the Open but then also be super successful so that when everybody rolls out of the Open, not only in the best shape of their life, but uh, they're looking good and ready for, for the, uh, the spring and summer to go to the beach yeah. too. That's cool. <laughs> that's awesome, Even, exp even expanding a little different areas like dancing because that's right. a tough skill to yeah, pick up. Yeah, one, one of them is uh, she does Krav Maga, so she can teach some basic defense stuff sure. for, for a day. Anybody who wants to come in and, you know. Just, that's cool. Yeah, it just it keeps it fun and changing and dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, one thing I, I pick up there is you allow your community to – Excel in their creative genius. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, kind of yeah. like listen to what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. That, that that's huge because now you know when you're in a position where you're constantly taking instruction, it it's so empowering to give some instruction, you know, and to to have the the consciousness to to put people in that driver's seat and empower them in that way is huge, man. You know, but like Jeff was saying, that 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 can only come from the top down. So if you're not constantly striving for that self-improvement and focusing on the process, uh, regardless of the outcome, and enjoying that, your your people, your disciples, they're going to be a direct reflection of who you are. Yeah. You know, and if they and if they don't match that mold, I'm assuming that they're not part of your organization at all. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. you know, it, it it is it it's extremely important, and that that's something that you know uh, we pick up in the military too is that. 
uh, you know, it, how a unit operates, how successful they are as a unit is a direct reflection of who's in command. Yeah. So that's well, I take, you know, honestly, I, I'm lucky to have a really good coaching staff. M- Meredith Harris, who does my, the programming for the entire gym. Mm. She's kind of our cornerstone coach. She coaches the most hours. She's, she has the same, she's just like me, mm-hmm. you know, but a female. So mm-hmm. you got like, kind of like relates to, right. she's, I mean, it's, I, I'm really lucky to be surrounded by talent as far as my coaches are concerned. I certainly can't take credit. <laughs> That's so. incredible. As you continue to evolve, you know, as what do you do to sort of keep yourself on track and to push yourself past points? Because I know sometimes as we grow as entrepreneurs or, you know, just people, we can get complacent in ourselves. What do you do to keep pushing that level to the next point? Do you write your goals out and find where gaps are missing, or do you rely on the, like your network to tell you, hey, you could pick up in this area? Well, I'll answer that twofold. First, because I already said it, I don't, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll say it uh, again. I, it's so, I, th- I find it refreshing and exciting to constantly question my own beliefs mm-hmm. and my own uh, opinions because inevitably... I'm probably wrong on a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And, and that keeps things interesting and fresh, and it keeps me growing. So that's, that's critically important. Um, there's a second thing I wanted to say. What was, that? what was the crux of your question again? Sort of, do you rely on your network if you, if you don't ask yourself those right questions? Oh, to yeah, sort yeah. Of oh, so, so here's the other thing I want, how I wanted to respond to that. Um, look, I mean, to be honest... We all have it really good, and I mean, not mm-hmm. all of us, but anybody that's listening to this podcast right now, mm-hmm. you, you're well fed. You're, <laughs> you have a bed to sleep. You have plenty of clothes. You have a car. Like our first world problems here in the United States, it, I mean, we, we all kind of have it made. You look at mm-hmm. 100 years ago, that was legit. Mm-hmm. Like people, they, was, they didn't have heat. They didn't have running water. They didn't have a place to take a dump. It was. There was it was like people in the middle class yeah. like it wasn't always it's we have it good right now so now it's just a matter of okay well i know i'm going to be well fed i know i'm going to be fit I'm, what's what's going on in the world but <laughs> wow there's a lot of things changing i can now be larry king just as you guys are right now doing yeah. your podcast you guys are great interviewers and you're having fun with this and yeah. you're learning a lot and you can have your own uh, social media platform for publicity, as does a lot of other people. And you can raise money through um, Kickstarter and have thousands of people give you money. It's, and you have instant access mm. to millions of people. Uh, and so the whole landscape of the world is shifting so quickly. It's just fun and exciting to see all of that come together and to carve out a, a niche for how you might be able to contribute to the world with all those changes going on, whether it be, um, you know, just inspiring people Mm. or whether it be, uh, you know, making, helping people become the best versions of themselves they can be in this first world country where we're all fine anyway. (laughs) But it's like, what else are you going to do? Just let's try to be our best. Let's try to do cool shit. You know, I think that's, let's do it. And so um, to sort of see the world changing and transforming in these ways and make the most of it. It's just like a board game. It's just fun. It's like, mm. yeah. It's like, cool. Let's let's look. At, look at this new idea. Let's let's try to see what we can do with it. So, um, right now, my buddy Zane Lamprey, who's a member at my gym, he's done probably ten TV shows himself as a, a host. Um, he recently uh, created a Kickstarter campaign for a new jacket. A jacket. Nice. How many people have done jackets? <laughs> he brought in $1.8 million for his jacket. Nice. So Zane and I are now teaming up on a product that's going to be uh, it's coming down the pipe for you guys. It's going to be uh, uh, wellness related. And see how many millions we can make. There you, you go. Know? That's There's, awesome. And it's because that's what else are you going to do? Yeah. I, I know I'm going to have plenty of food, but let's see if we can make something cool that will help people and, yeah. and make a positive influence and impact on the world because. That's the that's the beautiful America we live in. It's a, it's a great place, you know. It's, that's it's right. It's fun, and uh, it, that's what keeps me going. So that's just cra- kind of making cool, fun, new stuff. That's crazy because you see the way you frame things is such in such a positive way. I, I feel like a lot of people don't have that type of framing. You know, they look at things as like the world is falling. Like you said, you wake up in a first world country, you have all this access. Your phone, you can create a business on your phone, yeah. make Kickstarter, <laughs> do whatever. 
but that's that's incredible that the way you, you you frame things in such a positive light and when you put it into per, it sort of brings things into per, perspective because we don't a lot of people don't always look at things like that right. you know but that's it's it's above and beyond being the the eternal optimist yeah you know what i mean it's 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 going out of your way to because you know we we talked about this uh the the difference between being an optimist and just you know turning the other cheek and then living in abundance you know they're they're not the same thing both are positive but i think that that abundance mentality is what drives the results and facilitates a process where being an optimist can be extremely reactionary you know and just how you look at the shit that happens to you versus taking control of the things and making the conscious decision to act in the uh, be present and act in the positive and productive, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, dude, thanks, thanks for being here today. Thanks for you know sharing that mindset piece with us um, and our listeners. You know, uh, as as we were talking yesterday, you know, I was like, we need to have him on the show. <laughs> yeah, he has he has something to offer, um, and you know, the, you've been um, extremely gracious in mm. um, being authentic yes. and uh you know i want I, I really want to ask you because i just finished the book uh the four agreements yeah have you read it no, of course yeah. of course i love it do your best it's the fourth agreement yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. The, you know that's, that's kind of the platform that you sit on um and uh that that's one again you need to read i do uh, need to read that <laughs> <laughs> it's good but, but dude uh, even t- i've been that's on my queue <laughs> i'm telling you so you got two you got two jobs <laughs> stranger things yeah. and four agreements <laughs> um, oh man but but before we let you go man uh we want to we ask everybody this um what's uh and you can answer on any level mental physical spiritual um because you certainly play on all three of those levels um what's something that you do each and every day what's part of your process to feed yourself and keep that that abundance mentality uh at the forefront of your mind and then the the second part of that question is what's something that you do each and every day uh to fuel yourself and let and allow that motivation and momentum to carry over into the next day hmm well one thing i do is in the I have to have coffee, obviously. We mentioned this this morning. <laughs> and it has to be good coffee. Good it's coffee. really important. Uh, so I'll sneak down before anyone's awake while my kids are still sleeping, make some coffee. And then I'll go in a back room, and I'll try to visualize my day. Mm. A lot of times, I'm way off. <laughs> a lot of times. But I'll try to, at least, because, you know, you got, your, you got your calendar on your phone. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so great. Uh, and you can sort of imagine how it's going to play out. And so I just sit there for five minutes and just try to visualize, okay, they're probably going to see this person. What's this going to be like? I know what the workout of the day is today. How am I going to attack this? Um, you see how tired you're going to get. That way when it actually happens, you're not be like, oh, there it is. This is the part where I want to quit CrossFit forever. <laughs> you know, like, like, and, and you kind of like map it out. And then it, it, it inevitably, if it turns out the way you want it or better, it's it's a bonus, but I just find that when I do that, I stay on point and on task more often. I don't get distracted by Facebook or, or my email inbox or other things that just kind of suck an hour out of my day for no reason. So just sort of trying to visualize step by step and accomplishment by accomplishment. Okay, I'm going to spend this hour writing or I'm going to spend this hour, uh, you know, talking to my coaching staff or whatever it is. Um, I find that if I spend five minutes visualizing the day, the days turn out better. Nice. Sure. So that's that's that. Well, there was a second um, to fuel so, yourself. Yeah. What do you do to keep, keep it, it keep keep it moving? Mm-hmm. Keep keep that mov- motivation and momentum up. Yeah. Well, I, reading's important. I, I read a lot of books, uh, but I mean, I think it's the people. I, as much as I bring a real authentic authenticity to them, I have to be engaged and interactive with my friends, family, community. I have to be working out with them. I literally can't even, if I have a, like a workout that I have to do, I'll just do it alongside them while they're doing their wad in the class. Like I can't, I have to, I need (laughs) fuel off of them. I'm such a wimp. (laughs) (laughs) Remember when I was at the, at the regular gym, it was like, okay, I'm going to go do back and buys and chest and tries always alone. (laughs) Now I'm like, I am worthless without you. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, so tapping into my community, it sounds selfish, 
But that's, I guess, why I try to give so much because I know how much I get from all those folks. Nice. There and before before we get out to uh, where the community can follow you, we talked about this a little early before the podcast started. Your wrestling background in the Randy Couture story. Oh, Tell you mean Chuck Liddell? Chuck Liddell. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah well, they were yeah. like rivals, right? Back yeah. in the day. So um, I was having trouble. So for undergrad, I went to a school called California Polytech in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. And um, when I got there, I was having trouble with accounting three. And athletes get free tutoring. Mm -hmm. And I had never really had trouble with, with uh, any classes. But this accounting three was brutal. So I went into the office, and she's like, yeah, we'll get you a tutor, no problem. She hands me the list, and there's like 10 names on there. And one of them is this Chuck Liddell. I'm like, oh, cool. I know Chuck from wrestling. I'll take Chuck. So I would go to Chuck's house up in his apartment, and he would break down accounting three. And I'm, you know, I went off after this to get an Ivy League MBA. I'm not, like, I can handle, <laughs> you know, math and stuff. But he broke it down into terms that were just really easy to understand and relate and made sense. And so you think he's like a chump with a mohawk. <laughs> but, dude, the guy is wicked crazy smart. And, uh, yeah, he's the guy that got me a B plus and <laughs> <laughs> the hardest class wow. I took. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, would never so. know that. I that's know. incredible, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's a heck of a story. Not <laughs> a lot of people. That's a story people need to know right there. <laughs> and then uh, the final question is, where can the community go support you personally, your businesses, businesses, everything that you have going on? I mean. So it's CrossFit Horsepower. Come yeah. on by anytime. They're in uh, L.A., both of them. One's in Hermosa Beach. One's in Studio City. Uh -huh. Twitter's just Dan Wells. Okay. Um, Something different, I think, on Facebook, Instagram. I, I was gonna, I did that TV show, and they're like, "We need to get you a blue check mark." I'm like, "Great, put it on there." They're like, "Well, we need to take off the numbers and weird stuff from your name. Can we put officials?" I, I kind of, it's kind of a douchey thing, but they made me do it, so it's official. Dan Wells is the Instagram handle. For, okay, you know, <laughs> it makes it easy to. But remember. it's fine. I got a blue yeah. check mark with now, me. Now, now it's official. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> so yeah, so I'm available there and. Uh, Hit me up. I'm pretty good at responding to, you know, any any uh, emails or messages, DMs, pretty easy, too. Nice. And then cool. we'll, have to, we'll have to put your uh, jacket venture that's about to take off. Yeah, mine won't be a jacket. Mine will no. be, uh, yeah, it's a, it, more of a chair. Okay. Hush, hush. Yeah. Hush, hush yeah. right now, huh? Yeah, it's exciting. Well, you know, we got to get the patents. Yeah, if you ever want us to link it up in your show notes, let us know. For we'll sure, bro. Definitely get, get support for you, you on that, brother. If you want to slide us one, we'll, we'll test yeah, it. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a lot, lot more comfortable than this, uh, this stone I'm sitting on sitting right now. Right? <laughs> look at this. That's why I, why I like fold it up. I'm sitting on a folded up pillow right now. I mean, that's we obviously, there's a need. Maintaining yeah. posture. Sitting on a wall yeah. ball right now, man. <laughs> Good call. Awesome, man. No, thank, thanks for being here, man. Yeah. We really enjoy the fact that you took time out of your day. We know you got a huge event to prepare for this evening. For and, sure, uh, guys. And join us on, a, on a, our journey as we enjoy being a part of yours. And uh, for, for our listeners, make sure you get out there and uh, dive into everything that Dan's got going on. And if you're in the Southern California area, check out CrossFit Horsepower. They'll, they'll treat you well. He's got good people there. And uh, you, might, you might see some folks you recognize from time to time, it yep. sounds like. You bet. Um, so, uh, again, thanks for being here, little brother. And uh, until next time, guys, feed me, feel me. Bam. And that'll do it for this episode with our special guest, Dan Wells. If you want to see everything that Dan has going and his gym, CrossFit Horsepower, please go to our full show notes at feedmefuelme.com. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media, including Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter, at feedmefuelme. We would love to hear from each and every one of you. If you found this episode inspiring in any way, please rate, comment, share, and subscribe so we can continue on this journey together. Also, be sure to share it with your friends and family on social media, including Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter, or any other social platforms that you use. We really appreciate you spending your time with us today and allowing us to join you on your journey. We would love to hear your feedback on this episode, as well as guests and topics for future episodes. To end this episode, we would love to leave you with a quote by Winston Churchill. The positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. Thank you again for joining us, and we will catch you on the next episode. <laughs>